The average weight of the Apple Watch is approximately 38 grams and that is shared between the outer casing and the internal components of the Apple Watch. And since this is such a small device, with small devices come smaller batteries, thereby making each and every battery percentage worth it. So in this video, I'll be showing you some of the settings that you can change without compromising on the core features of the Apple Watch in order to best optimize your battery performance. It's part of my job here on the channel I've been testing watch OS and different Apple devices for about five years and this is a list of some of the things that you can do to improve your battery life the first thing that you might want to do is to periodically restart your device if you've never done that in a long time especially if you are doing testing or if you do a software update and you notice some hiccups or glitches it doesn't hurt to restart and power off your device in order to give it a fresh restart from from time to time. When you look at your Apple Watch, one of the thing that you stare at the most is the watch face. And just to let you know of this, not all watch faces are the same. Some watch faces use more battery. A major contributing factor to the battery drain of a watch face depends on how many complications you add. So different watch faces will have different complications. So for example, this watch face that you are seeing here, this is the modular ultra watch face. And you can see it allows me to be able to add seven different different complications if you count the time that's eight different complications that are refreshing periodically and in real time if you are able to minimize the amount of complications that might be on your favorite watch face that will help or at the same time if you are to select a different watch face that doesn't have a lot of complications then that will also save you some battery Keep in mind that if you use a lot of third party Apple Watch faces like this one that you're seeing, that is also going to be contributing to, to the drain. And since it has to communicate with the native app that's on the iPhone, then that will also affect the battery life. I have quite a number of third party watch faces and each has its own occasion. So just keep in mind that the watch face that you are looking at, if it's a third party or if it has a lot of information and complications, then that is definitely going to affect your battery performance. Now, a pretty general misconception that I see from a lot of users when using the Apple Watch, sometimes a lot of people tend to turn off the Bluetooth, even though the iPhone or the Apple Watch is a Wi-Fi version and it's not a cellular version and turning off Bluetooth of the iPhone that's paired with the Apple Watch actually affects your battery life in a negative way because when the Apple Watch can't find the iPhone that it is paired to, then it will keep searching more frequently at the same time, it will be trying to retrieve notifications and re-establish that communication. And Bluetooth is one of the major ways that it does that. So keeping on Bluetooth of the iPhone that's paired with your Apple Watch will go a long way in giving you better and improved battery life on your Apple Watch. Another thing you can do in order to save battery or improve the performance optimization on your Apple Watch is to go into your app view section and see the application applications that you haven't used or don't even recognize that you might have installed way, way long ago in the past on your Apple Watch. And the best way to do this is actually to go into the list view. And this way you have an alphabetical order and you can go all the way from A to the last application that you have and if you notice one for example that you haven't used in a long time or that you don't need you can go ahead and remove that application and that will save you battery life because there's background constant communication that might be ongoing and you can always delete the application by tapping and holding and you notice that the default applications not all of them can be deleted from the apple watch like the messages but some other applications like my queue i can delete there if there is an x right there i can tap on it and if i tap on the x it will ask me if i want to delete the application and then i can say delete and boom the application has been removed and the space as well as the resources such as communications and info upgrade that it was doing will now will no longer be existing and the battery use that was associated with that will be saved if you go into your settings on your apple watch right here and you go to the series section you'll see that here you have the ability 
or the option that says raise to speak. Every time you raise up your risk like this, Siri on the Apple Watch will be activated and it will always be listening even though you're not using Siri, it will be there but dormant and every time you say Siri or the Hey Siri phrase, then it's going to trigger that Siri. So in order to optimize this better and save a little bit of battery, it's better to just switch this off. And now instead of triggering Siri accidentally by raising your risk or doing random movements, next time you can just press the digital crown like this and now Siri will be activated. Isn't that right Siri? Sorry, I can't do that. If you're a person that keeps their Apple Watch device for a long period of time, one of the things that you can do is to go into your settings and go to the battery section right here. And if you click where it says battery health right here, you can see it gives you this option to optimize charge limit. What this enables the Apple Watch to do is to learn from your daily usage and determine when to charge to optimize charge limit and when to allow for a full charge. So this really will help your battery health maximum capacity you can see mine right now at the time of this recording it's on 95 percent and this is a very good way to preserve that maximum health capacity because the best percentage to keep your apple or your electronic devices in general is between 20 percent and 80 percent and if you don't need that extra 20 percent then you can always turn on this optimized charge limit and your apple watch will learn from your habits and charge accordingly something else to change that always communicate communicating with other devices or other users on your network is the walkie-talkie function. So if your walkie-talkie in your control center looks like this, it means that it's available and it's always going to be looking for other devices or other users that are trying to connect to you on your network. So what you can do is to disable the walkie-talkie and it will say walkie-talkie unavailable. And then what you can do further to avoid that constant communication is if you go into your Apple Watch application right here and go to where it says walkie talkie, you can turn off the notifications and then that way that constant communication that uses a bit of battery won't be happening in the background. In addition to having a good and better watch face like I mentioned at the start of the video, another setting that you can look into is the display setting since you know almost the whole front of the Apple Watch is the display. So if you go into your settings and go to where it says display and brightness here there's a general misconception that i see a lot of people want to turn off this feature that says wake upon raise and that's the feature that allows your apple watch to wake up every time you raise your wrist and brighten and show you the information so if you turn this off it doesn't really do much to save or improve your battery life or performance over the course of a day what this will save you is approximately 2% and I've tested this before. So instead of just turning off the wake on raise risk feature, it's better to just turn off always on display. But this is something that I've always found controversial because if I'm buying an Apple Watch that has always on display, then there's no way I'm going to be turning this off. So this is one of those features that I'm willing to compromise at the same time. If you look into your brightness or the appearance of your Apple Watch right here, you can see, you know, you can only tune about increments of 33% because there's only like three bars. But since the Apple Watch screen is so bright, especially the Apple Watch Ultra or the Apple Watch Ultra 2, you don't need to always keep your display appearance or brightness all the way to the maximum. You can see for me, ever since I got this device, this is as low as it can go, about 33%. And it's always been like that. And this will save you a little bit of battery life if you want to keep the display or the always on display like this. If you're going to be doing a workout and you are worried that maybe your battery won't last the course of your workout or perhaps you're going for like a marathon or you're going to need your device to basically give you metrics over the course of two days or so, what you can do instead of turning on this low power mode that people usually turn on when they go to the percentage right here and activate the low power mode, there's a better alternative which actually allows you to be able to go further and that is found by going into the settings and if you go all the way down you see workouts click there 
and now you have this low power mode under workouts and with a normal apple watch if you don't turn this on workouts will give you about 12 hours on a full charge but with this workout low power mode you have the ability to go all the way to 60 hours now keep in mind that this does not work for all types of workouts you can see that this is uh, improves battery life in workouts such as running and hiking and this will reduce the frequency of heart rate readings to once every one minute and then gps readings will be recorded once every two minutes something that drains a lot of battery on the apple watch are the background processes for different applications that you may have so if you want Want to keep an application and you want to turn off the background effects that it has on your performance and on your battery you can go into your settings and if you go to general you will see background refresh app if you click there you have the ability to turn off background app refresh which may preserve battery life and you can see if you go down you have all your apps listed in alphabetical order so for example if you don't want this british airways flight application to be doing the background refresh in the background you can turn it off right there and you can always go depending on the applications that you have and switch off that background refresh to applications that you feel aren't necessary to have this and that way you'll be able to save on the battery optimization and performance that was being drained by those apps if you go into your settings on your Apple watch and you go to where it says sounds and haptics right there if you go down a little bit you now have the ability to change your ringtones by the way with the latest watch OS version but something that might save you a lot of battery is to go into where it says haptics right here if you click here you can see you have the option to turn off your haptics which i don't really recommend because if you want some notifications or some important reminders on your apple watch to display then you want that haptic to come with a notification as well but instead of having it to prominent or set to prominent like this way the vibration or the haptic is more powerful you can reserve a little bit of or save a little bit of power by selecting the default one which is more conservative and that way every time you get a notifications or a call or something like that your device won't take much of a hit when it comes to the battery so those are just some of the reminders that i thought i should let you know of when it comes to optimizing and changing a few settings on your apple watch in order to have the best battery life and user experience this way so that's about it for me let me know if you have any other recommendations or suggestions in the comment section below and hit subscribe if you haven't yet done so and i'll see you in the next video peace